conversation uh, that I started in part one um, about our homeschool kind of journey. We are just starting out. I am a uh, mom of a two and a half year old and an eight and a half month old. And for the last um, two and a half years, really, I've been doing a lot of research and trying to formulate our philosophy of education as a family, my husband and I together. And so um, today I just wanted to continue that conversation. If you have not gotten a chance to look at part one, I will link that below. Um, but if you are interested in kind of seeing where family um, who is just starting out, what we're thinking and kind of um, the materials we're looking at and the resources we're using to help us um, to develop our philosophy of education, then just keep on watching. So I, um, like I said, am mom to a two and a half year old son named Samson and an eight and a half month old who's currently napping, he's so cute, um, Jericho. And um, I began doing taught school with Samson when he was around 13 months old. And it was super low key. If you want to see what we did and um, kind of how I structured it and organized it, you can check out my blog, a foolflourishing.com. And there's a whole section um, that has some of our taught school things that we did and kind of my mindset behind it. But we had so much fun. And then um, I have some notes down here just so I can make sure and stay on track. Um, the taught school was really Montessori and Waldorf um, inspired and focused. And then the past six months, we began incorporating aspects of um, Charlotte Mason method. And um, I began really like diving in and doing research. And um, so I really wanted to, the purpose of this video is to um, kind of share and give um, kind of an idea of like, how we are formulating our philosophy of education because what I think sometimes people do is they just jump into like we're gonna homeschool what curriculum should we use oh my gosh what curriculum we have to find a curriculum what curriculum are you using that's what I hear a lot of and what I think is really important no matter how late in the game you're starting or if you're starting way ahead of time like I did is to really um, and of course this is the educator and me talking but to really sit down and think um, what is my philosophy of homeschool education? What is our philosophy as a family? So um, I came across a blog called Farmhouse Schoolhouse and Elsie has four boys and they are just like a step ahead of us. I think her youngest, maybe six. Um, and all four of her boys are pretty close together but she does a really lovely blend of um, classical conversations and the classical model with the Charlotte Mason and her blog just has a an abundance of um, information just a wealth of knowledge and her spirit is so gentle and sweet and I just adore her and have learned so much from her and so um, I would definitely encourage you to check that out she has a great blog but her Instagram is really great too so farmhouse schoolhouse and um, so that's one resource I use I know it's like a blogger but she is a phenomenal resource and then um, through her, I learned about the resource Homegrown Preschooler, um, A Year of Playing Skillfully. And that is a curriculum, but it's unlike any curriculum that is really on the market in that it's just one thing. You would purchase one thing. It's, um, you know, the months in the year with the exception of three months in the summer. And then the way it's designed is very relaxed. There's, um, it can fit into anyone's homeschool day. You can pick and choose pieces. You can do all of it. Um, it's just a really lovely curriculum and um, it is set up in such a way that you can do, you can use it every single year. You can use the same one every year and I was um, not sure if I believed that. <laughs> um, if, if because I uh, come from a background of writing a lot of curriculum, I'm really fast at writing curriculum. I'm really good at it. I've done it for a number of years for different organizations for my own classroom. And um, when you, if you go onto homegrownpreschooler.com, you can uh, get a sample. You can get September, the whole month of September, and you can look at the entire month and see everything, all the activities, pictures, everything. And um, I remember looking at it and thinking, well, I could write that. I mean. It's not that big of a deal, but it is a big deal because what I began to realize is I mold that over in my mind and thought about it and listened to Elsie talk about it and just really let um, 
God work on my heart about it, what I realized is that I cannot reinvent the wheel constantly. I did do taught school with Samson, but it was really hard and I couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up with the, um, at the pace at which he was devouring the things that we were learning and uh, what he wanted to know. I just could not keep up with his pace. And I was finding myself really frustrated because I had the potential to um, do a lot more and he definitely wanted to do more. So what the Homegrown Preschool has provided us, we started in January, so we've done January, February, and now we're doing March. And what it has provided us is just a foundation. And so each month I look at it, I pick and choose the things that are appropriate for a two and a half year old because it's not even really until like ages maybe three to seven even. But um, there's plenty of things that even your tots could do, like a 13 and 14 month old. There's plenty of things. Um, so it's really like a great curriculum for the whole family, but um, it's very play-based, very um, open, like hands-on. There's no worksheets, nothing like that. Um, but anyways, so what I do is I look at it and I pick the pieces that go and then I may add things in, like for the month of March, I am, I'm adding in like a whole kind of section on worms because we are going to start gardening and that's a perfect time to explore worms and Samson's been really excited about that. Um, so anyways, that is Homegrown Preschooler. I could talk more and more about it, but um, that's a great resource to check out. The next resource is um, that I've been using. Samson is an avid reader. When he was 10 months old, we were sitting on the couch for 20, 30, one time 40 minutes just looking at books. And I remember just thinking, oh wow, this is like this is like my dream come true. I love books so much and it was so amazing. We'd get home from the library and we'd just like read sometimes for almost an hour until I'm like, oh yeah, I'm done. Um, but anyways, I have been doing a lot of research into the Charlotte Mason method and um, a resource that I have found very helpful if you go to Ambleside, and I will hopefully be able to put this in the description below, but Ambleside online, if you go there and you look at their resources, that is just an incredible wealth of information. It just has, even if you aren't interested in Charlotte Mason, which if you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. But even if you're not interested in Charlotte Mason, um, if you go on there and you just want to see book lists that are quality books, because sometimes, let's face it, we go to libraries and it's like I am just inundated with books that I'm just like, these are kind of trash. I don't really like them. Um, and it's hard to try and like find the ones that are worthy and worthwhile and lovely. And so, um, sometimes. And so, anyways, I go and I look at the book lists on Ambleside Online. It's completely free. Their um, whole heart is that people all over the world at any time with any kind of economic status would have access to a Charlotte Mason education essentially and so um, anyways for, for year kindergarten they actually don't have anything listed because Charlotte Mason believes you know in you um, in children just being outside in nature and we do do a lot of that um, but Samson also is an avid reader and I really 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 wanted to make sure that my mind was kind of going in the right direction with it and so um, I've been looking at year one and so we've read Pinocchio, we're currently reading Charlotte's Web, we've read Where the Red Fern Grows, that's not in their book list, but um, we've read When the Soldiers um, Left, um, which is like a Holocaust book kind of for kids. Anyways, that's a great, I'm getting off topic, but I could just talk about books forever. But um, anyways, so Ambleside Online. So then um, Cindy Rollins is a woman who is part um, she's kind of the speaker on a podcast called The Mason Jar, and one of my friends introduced me to The Mason Jar. That's actually how I started um, delving into the world of Charlotte Mason. I didn't actually read a book like I did with the other um, researchers of ch child education, um, but through The Mason Jar, I learned more about Charlotte Mason. So if you need a way where you're not just having to sit down and read, I would highly encourage you, even if you're not interested in Charlotte Mason, but you're just interested in homeschool, I would still encourage you to just type in um, The Mason Jar Podcast. And they are part of the Ambleside online community. But um, 
anyways, Cindy Rollins is the speaker on there, and um, she has written a book called Mere Motherhood, which is an excellent read, but um, all, like I think pretty much as excellent is a book she wrote called Morning Time, and she really coined that term, but I first came into contact with it um, through Elsie from Farmhouse Schoolhouse, and um, so... I could talk forever about morning time, but really it would be great if you just like looked into it and you could learn more about it by either reading the book Morning Time by Cindy Rollins or you could go check out Elsie's blog post. She's got great blog posts on it. But um, morning time is just a time during the day that um, it's structured a little bit and um, it's just kind of where you do a lot of your homeschool. So anyways, that's a great book. Just phenomenal book, really. And I talked to you about the Mason Jar Podcast. So those are really um, the resources that I'm using. Now, I have like a whole library of books, um, Waldorf books, Montessori books um, that I have read. So I could always talk about the ones that I have found the most helpful. But as far as resources that we're using right now, that's about it and um, I guess I'll end it by saying you know all kids are different Jericho may be very different than Samson or he may be very similar um, we'll just have to see how it goes there are some days like when we're reading Pinocchio I did not realize how stout I guess you could say Pinocchio is it's a book I'd never read it I had seen the Disney movie like years ago but Pinocchio is kind of an intense book and if I'm honest, and if I'm giving a review, which I'm not here to give a review, but I didn't really like it that much, but um, sometimes we would be reading Pinocchio, and we would only read maybe, you know, it's a, a book without pictures. It only has a picture every, like, four or five pages, and um, it has really high-level vocabulary and kind of concepts and things, but we might read, like, two pages, and then you know, Samson was, like, squirming and stuff, and I'd say, are you done? Are you done reading? He's like, yes, I'm done. I'm like, okay. You know, and same with morning time, same with homegrown preschooler. If, you know, uh, we have a little activity that we do and he's only interested in it for two or three minutes, well, that is perfectly fine. He's two and a half. Go along, go play, do whatever you would like to do. Or if he's wanting to use it a different way, that's fine. But then there are pockets of time and moments that are just beautiful where we may be sitting in the rocking chair for 20 minutes. And we may read, you know, three whole chapters in Pinocchio to the point where Mama's like, okay, I'm done, boy. Like, okay, that's enough. And so, um, anyways, I just would encourage you that all kids are different. And just because our journey looks a certain way and um, our kids look a certain way doesn't mean that all kids are interested in the same things. So, thanks. I looked back and I realized, oh, I forgot one more um resource that we've been using. So the if you go to the website montessoricompass.com, um, there is actually a scope and sequence that they have on there of every subject, even like practical life, of things that um, the kids should be accomplishing, that children should be accomplishing, and at what age. And um, it's just like, it's an extensive list. And you can't really print it out. I think you may have to pay to or something, but it's still just a really great resource to use to kind of give you like an idea of what you can be looking towards, especially if you're not someone, if you're like me, you know, I um, taught middle school science and so I um, am not as well versed in early childhood education, so it's just very helpful, but definitely I would encourage you not to use it as a checklist. Do not um, look at it and um, like start checking things off. Well, my child's not doing this. It's just really meant, um, I think, as a guide. So, thanks for stopping by and watching. I hope that this helped you. Um, I wish that I just yearned so badly to be able to find a mom who is just starting out or who had documented her journey just starting out. And so I thought, well, I'm just starting out and I get lots of questions from friends and direct messages on Instagram. Maybe I should share. So if this helps you, let me know. Um, Cause sometimes it's not the easiest um, taking the time to um, sit down and do the videos. So I would love to hear from you if this is helping you and encouraging you. And I hope